Yeah, uh, yeah. Like I think it's 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 very rawly putting Cole and Baird as central characters because they are the yeah, comic they relief. Were, yeah, they, were, they didn't really do well as leads, if you know what I mean. They were kind of they lost a bit of their kind of playoff charm because they were the leads, not the well, like not the, the caricatures. The characters. Yeah, it, you know, it's like a movie when you, when you have a spin-off TV show or something or a movie. It doesn't work sometimes because it's just uh, the dynamics different. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, they they work really well because they're kind of like the secondary comic relief pair. They kind of swoop in, say a couple of catchphrases. You know, Coltrane is is big and loud, and uh, Baird is like whiny and bitchy. And then they, they kind of leave and let Marcus and Dom do their kind of more serious, slightly more grounded story yeah. beats. You um, know, you know. In in my brain, I kind of I kind of link um, Gears Judgment with uh, God of War Ascension because they're yeah. kind of similar, where they were both just kind of like. Um, they were quick... spin-offs. Yeah, and they were both like quickly after like the third entry, um, and kind of felt a bit too much. You know what I mean? For a bit too much yes. too soon. Yeah, I, I mean, I I really liked Gears of War on the Xbox 360. Um, I never played Judgment for for whatever reason. I I, I, I it probably just because it I, I I was done with Gears of War by then. I think. Yeah, um, yeah, like, I agree with you. It, it didn't add any, anything to it either. It was just like, oh, there's another one. That's a bit like of a side thing. I mean, like I, I played Gears of War four um, and enjoyed it. I am kind of I'm passing on Gears of War five at least for now, just because of everything else that's coming out. It's 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 low down on the pecking order. Yeah, um, I, I, well, I will get into this in, in the podcast, but like I haven't been playing too much recently with work and stuff. But I feel like it's the calm before the storm because now we're getting into it where it's going to be just game after game. Yeah, I think you're right. Well, I suppose with that, uh, we'll make a make a start to this week's show. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Lift off. We have a lift off. Hello, welcome to the pod. It is September fifth, guys. We made it. It's autumn. I can't believe it's autumn. Um, it's it, it summer has it come and gone. Um, yep. It, it, it's it's like somebody's flicked a switch. As soon as we hit September, um, it's now getting cold. It's getting dark. Our cat has started it. putting himself to bed at eight o'clock because he thinks it's <laughs> bedtime with the dark nights. <laughs> He, it, it, like, literally the clock, clock strikes eight and he just kind of looks at it and wanders off up, in, up into the bedroom and then when you go up like hours later he's curled up in his own little bed in the corner and he's asleep and he sleeps all night um so it's it's really weird i, like, I haven't really seen him the perfect child yeah he's, he's yeah he's, he's like the chillest cat ever he does nothing at all really he just sleeps and pesters you every so often for food and then you talks, feed him he goes he quiet a lot, that's about it yeah um, so yeah, the Dark Knights are here. September, August, August just went. August flew over, um, and you know, you, you know, you, you just said there, Maddie, calm before the storm. Um, mm. Summer is traditionally a very dry period for video games. Um, I tend to, I don't know about you guys, but I always feel like I end up picking up one or two games that are like the summer investment, and you play them a long time over summer. Yeah, because there's I very mean, little else coming out. I, I tend to buy. That. Quite a few cheap games and just go through them rather than one big one and let it linger. I think I just can't be honest with like, especially during the, during the summer. I, like it, it's always hot and chewy and stuff. So I get like, <laughs> I get annoyed when playing games. So it's much better when it's autumn <laughs> and winter. Rather than I mean, to be fair, Assassin's Creed Odyssey has probably lasted you four summers. Oh fucking hell! Thank fuck! I've, I've I've got rid of that game. I'm done. I deleted it. <gasps> it's so been good. <laughs> Oh, 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 breaking well, news! I didn't, breaking, I did, breaking I news on the podcast. It. Yeah, I didn't platinum it in the end because I just got fucking so fed up. I was like 120 plus hours into it, and like it, it, it was just such a chore because I looked at that game every time. I was like, I can't be lost. I just can't be lost. I was so done with that game. Um, I think in general, like what I did after that game actually is, um, which some people do, I've disabled. Um, this may sound weird, but. It's part of my like mini OCD thing. I've disabled notifications for trophies. I'm no longer giving a fuck about trophies, like to even think of them. I, I never really chase them, but like they would be in the back of my mind, you know. Um, <laughs> like now it's just like I don't want to have another game where I've got to do every single side thing. It's like just, just oh, nah. Maddie, Maddie, what are you gonna do with all this free time you've got? <laughs> 
to fucking get the next Assassin's Creed? No, Have no, you learned, no. learned to play the piano or something? No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, honestly, I, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that's over and done with. Um, so, oh, okay, so uh, I uh, have. You, have you played it, Cash? No. Are you going to ever play it? In the future, I mean, if you say anything, I don't think it's going to spoil it for me. Because I, um, I really want to ask Matty about the ending because it sounds well, like I'll ask him. It's, it's, it's probably going to, not going to make a change in my decision. I, I don't. I, I don't play those games. I, I don't even need to go into specifics. There's nothing about the ending that, like, particularly, um, like, stood out as being like, uh, you know, horrendous. It was just a choice that you had, if that's what you're referring to. No. I, I, so what I'm referring to. So spoilers. So skip ahead a minute or two if you don't want to know the the ending of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. But it sounds like that game does everything it can to stop you getting there in the first place. Um, is that you know you go through all this this bullshit there's a 120 hour action rpg adventure game which is it's just a long time for a game it's like a that fucking I mean, long, oh it's a long time it's a it, long, it long puts time. the witcher to shame that i i would argue and that and the witcher i would imagine is, is a far richer variety yeah, of, for, of side from stories what I understand, and, yeah um basically you uh, you find somebody who there's a character you're hunting throughout the game you find them it turns out that you're father and they've got an artifact that's keeping them alive because they're technically like hundreds of oh, thousands of years part. old well, yes. but, but, yeah. but the, the, and then you the, basically it's like yes you found me great uh here you take this artifact that's keeping me alive now you're going to be kept alive to pass on this message and they kind yeah. of wither away and die like Ark of the Covenant style no it's not Ark of the Covenant it's the Last Crusade style um Indiana Jones reference that I botched there um and then the game, because the game, you know, Assassin's Creed will not abandon the current the, the current day storylines. I'm right thinking that your character in the current day then goes to find your character from the past, opens this vault with them in, they're still alive because of this artifact, and it's like, well done, you found me. Now I'm passing this on to you. And <laughs> then they die. Very, yeah, it's very much, uh, some games do this, like where, I mean, Halo, Halo 4 is what comes to mind, is where a game storyline just goes completely like needlessly bash it and like all of a sudden everything's mystical and it's like what's the point why, why have you done that but i think in terms of assassin's creed the reason they did it is because it's the dlc it serves that that purpose um oh what's the dlc you flipping a plot <sighs> it's atlantis yeah, or something isn't it atlantis yeah um oh. and that's what that's like that that's sort of that mission side mission arc is all about um, I just think it's, I... it's laughable. Like after 120 hours of getting to know um, these 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 main characters, uh, is it Cassandra or Cassandra uh, or um, oh fucking hell, um, or something like Artelius or, or Arrest? Uh, I don't know. I, I, let's I, just I, call it. Yeah. Just call him Bill. That's as much Bill, like Bill and Cassandra, um, and then yeah. they basically like hang around for like 2,000 years in a, in a in a cave, only to go, "Hello, modern day character who no one cares about." I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but here's the thing. It, it sounds uh, like <laughs> Zelda is too dangerous to go alone, take this. And they just yeah. it. <laughs> but, like, it's, it's the thing Assassin's Creed does with the whole, like, uh, coming back into the the modern world and stuff. It's all this kind of bullshit fluff that doesn't really, I it's mean, not we, required, you know? We've talked about it before. They, they really need to drop. In my eyes, they really, really need to drop the modern day storyline because. It it made sense when it was Assassin's Creed was going to be a trilogy and it had a start, yeah. middle, and end, and it was about Desmond. And when Assassin's Creed became this annual franchise, it, it no longer made sense to to carry that forward. And I cannot yeah. believe, even with these soft reboots of Origins and Odyssey, that they're keeping it going. It's fucking unreal. Yeah, this should just be like, oh, he is a time and place in history. He is some. You know, play some stuff. Yeah, you don't need to. You don't, you don't really need yeah. to do this kind of back and forth crap anymore. You could just probably get away with the. Uh, I suppose they don't know how to close the story, so they just fucking pull it. But they, they put and less just, of it in just every. Just forget about every, it. Yeah, they put less of it in every game, so every game it sticks out more. Like it's just like. Just, just oh, like, no one cares yeah. about it. It's got no cohesion. No. As far as I'm aware, it's got no cohesion across games. So just no. forget about it. Drop it. Never mention it again. Ignore it. It's never gone Did anywhere anyway. So like, uh, answer me this because we're already we're already talking about it. <laughs> We've already spoiled the ending in in, in, in very kind of high level vague terms. Um, 
does like the the modern day storyline where I can't even remember what she's called the the first civilization woman from the Desmond games who gets unleashed at the end of Assassin's Creed 3 onto the world and, and basically it's kind of like oh you've unleashed her you shouldn't have done that she's going to bring on a second apocalypse is that moved forward any is she even mentioned is it moved I forward don't, in any I, way? I don't think she was mentioned but I'll be perfectly honest with you every single every single like modern day set and story I literally just switched off I just wanted to get back to the game as quickly as possible yeah it was just it was like you know what it was it was a fucking interactive Loading screen or some bullshit. <laughs> like to me, it was just a ah oh, no. Um, so yeah, they 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 could do with dropping all that bullshit. And and I tell you what, I don't want to play another Assassin's Creed game for a long, long time. <laughs> I think uh, coming off of Origins, and by you, Odyssey, um, the HD oh, remaster of Assassin's Creed Three for Christmas. Man. Oh Christmas Jesus! Really no. <laughs> my God! I'm Christmas. <laughs> Come on, it's it's, it's winter. <laughs> Declaration of Independence, Cobra, it's what you want. So like, the, way I, the way I played both them games, and the reason I burned out on them, um, was because obviously me trying to do every single, <laughs> every, single, you know, every single side thing, everything, everything on the map, you know what I mean, just being an idiot. Um, but f- I don't know how the game handles where people just don't do that, because you, a lo- what I noticed in the game is there's a lot of, uh, a lot of grinding, kind of, and I don't know if certain quests require to be levels. Um, um, from what I understand, you... well, in order to get the the endings, you need to follow through on multiple quest chains that feed through certain side activities. Yeah. So you can't just mainline the game. You can't. No, you can't. And like so, but obviously that, that didn't affect me because I was like, well, hey, I'll do everything, <laughs> and then and then suffer for it. Um, <laughs> so, but if if you be play the game like a normal person would, then I don't know how how many walls you'd come up against, you know? Um, but yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Look, if you want to play an Assassin's Creed, play Origins, the one that came out before does, this does one. Does that mean you're not a normal person, mate? By that? Oh, God, not after that. <laughs> Never the same after that. I mean, um, you know, even before, really, let's even... face it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair point. <laughs> uh, so, like, you finally climbed that fucking mountain. Uh, have oh, you yeah. moved on to anything else? Uh, well, you know, here I am talking about like how I just can't be bothered with any kind of like open world games, and for for some reason I'm reinstalling Skyrim, and I don't know why um, oh, on yeah. my PlayStation Four. But the thing is, the, in my defence, with Skyrim, it's it's not like I have to do every single cave. I'm just going to go in and dick about for a bit. Well, um, I was going to say you could play that for three hours and go. I've had me fill. Bye bye. Yeah, because I, I don't I don't take it as like I, you know I just don't I'm not as obsessive when I play that game I just like to dig about. So what's I've got your, that um, installing. What What's but, your uh, planned build? Um. So when I've played it in the past, because I've played Skyrim about you know God how many times? Um. Like I've always played like a using a bow, sneaky character, stealthy character, or I've tried magic or. This time, I'm just building a fucking tank. I'm just, like, <laughs> going to be a walking tank. That's I just, the, easiest, I'm not gonna... the easiest build in the whole game. It's so yeah. easy. See, I, I found it easy with the, the stealth and the bone arrow because I could, sta- like, stay away from enemies. And if you, oh, to be fair, when you get the... Especially when you've done the um, the Assassin's Brotherhood, or the, the Brotherhood quest, sorry, and you get yeah. the equipment and stuff to kind of do extra damage for your daggers and stealth, extra stealth, you can clear almost anyone oh, and everything. Yeah, you, it is you, ridiculous. You, you become amazing at, at a certain point. Yeah, I um, then, and then with... I would say, I would say, tank is probably right up there in terms of just being. Uh, so see, I've, ne- I've never, I've never played that way. So I'm just building a heavy armor character. I think um, I'm going to get a shield, one one handed weapon of some sort, and then I'm not going to spec on anything else apart from that. I'm just beelining it all the way through with with that build. If you want to um, put a, a bit of a, an exotic twist on it, Manny. Yeah, heavy on. armor, but only pants, pants and <laughs> pants and gloves. No right. weapons, just yeah, yeah. Just fist, 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 uh, fist hand to hand combat. Just <laughs> fucking beat the shit if out. You're gonna, of if you're gonna do that, go Khajiit because they've got a, a ratio passive to Ex- increase. Well, I, w- I would do that anyway because they're a cat kind of creature, so I would do that anyway. Um, <laughs> of course you would. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, no. So I'm going to think about with that. I don't know if I'll stick with it. Um, but the other game I'm installing at the moment is uh, Doom on the PlayStation 4. Are you warning like yourself up for Doom Eternal? Yeah, I, you know, when I played through it, I played it on one of the harder difficulties. Um, this time I'm just going to play it back on, like, you know, normal. Because um, I, I, I love that game. Um, so I'm just going to uh, so, breeze through that. 
the last I heard of uh, Doom Eternal, so I, th- I, I like Doom. Um, it, you know, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. It's, it's really good. I I don't love it as much as some people seem to really like it. Um, I think mainly because I felt like it was a little bit too long towards the back half of it. I was kind of ready for it to finish about three levels before it actually did. Yeah. Um, but I, I, fucking Doom Eternal, the guy, the developers came out recently. Uh, and I'm, I'm kind of probably misquoting them a little bit here because it's off the, off the top of my head. But they kind of came out and said something like Doom Eternal is going to be like 22 hours long. And I was thinking for a game that Jeez. intense, oh, that's uh, too yeah, fucking but- long. But Ben, after after Assassin's Creed, that's a fucking that's a, <laughs> that's now. Yeah, yeah, but he's like, this is gonna be a speed run, twenty two hours. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, like it, it depends, like how much variety of like you know, because obviously they've got like a, a bigger budget and blah 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 for this game. I yeah, I, I think the original Doom was okay, twenty two hours. Oof. Yeah. Mm, a lot. You I mean, know, it's funny when I. More. My first experience of Doom was playing that multiplayer beta that came out before the game. Oh um, yeah. And it, and I remember the playing that. It was all right. It was all right. I like right, the uh, we could uh, turn it to the demons and uh, attack with us and use that as an like, advantage and stuff. That was good. I like that. I, mean, I, really th- I really thought that game was going to be naff because like they had the embargo on when the reviews what? didn't drop until the release, um, and then it fucking blew me away when it came out. Yeah, yeah I, I think, I think it was. I think there was definitely was like a, a hold your breath moment before it came out. Like it, it had been a long time. It was a. Despite going back to what Doom was originally, it seemed to be a change of direction for the franchise in, in the well, modern yeah, context. It, um, it was, yeah. You know, it wasn't... It, people didn't seem to have a lot of faith in Doom 2016 before it came out. No. And then when it did, people loved it. Like, really, really liked it. Because it was a case of, like, oh, I hear this franchise that, like, from the early 90s, you know, everyone knows Doom from there. Doom 3 came out in 2004, which was a bit of a departure in terms of its style. Yeah. Um, it was like survival horror, really, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, it was like slow paced. It was like there were technical limitations as to why they yeah. couldn't just like fill a room with, with enemies. So it was more of like a horror kind of, um, you know, uh, linear game. Yeah, you but very rarely felt overwhelmed. It was just kind of, uh, you know, getting people, catching them off guard and stuff like that. Yeah, so like it was, there was a lot of like, could Doom ever be bought to the modern, like to the modern kind of um, generation of consoles and still be relevant, you know? Um, and I think Doom, like Doom Four, as it was, like there were attempts at making that game back in like two thousand and seven and two thousand eight. Oh yeah, like, I remember. I remember when they. I think uh... at one point they were trying to make it like a bit like Call of Duty or something. Um, I might be getting my like I, No, no, I, I think I remember, mate. I think you are kind of on the money there. There was, yeah, they were trying to cash in on that new wave of like first person shooters, Call of Duty, things like that. And it never really went anywhere. No, and you know, I, I just thought, I, I thought it was a brilliant balance that game between kind of uh, bringing everything that was kind of or a lot of what was great about them original games and somehow making them work. Um, in 2016 so obviously with doom eternal i'm just hoping it's more of that bigger more stupid which I, some of the videos i've seen just seem to be showing that so I'll, I'll be happy with that game hopefully so i think it'll be i think it'll be i think it'll be good i think it'll be more of what doom was and the good parts of it i just yeah. feel like for me at 22 hours it's it's gonna have it's gonna have to have a lot more variety or a lot better pacing um, yeah, I agree. I, for a first-person shooter, twenty-two hours does seem like a, that's you know, long, man. Like the long, original, yeah. the, the original Halo was what, like ten to twelve hours, and that was the. I I used to think that, that was a, a big fucking campaign for a shooting game. And Halo, you know, it did variety well in terms of environments, in terms of vehicle yeah. combat being mixed in, in terms of the weapons. Twenty-two hours is a long fucking time to be. I mean, to be fair, the developer could, by be, demons. could be could be just like you know um well they could as well talking um, about like on the highest difficulty or, or anything you know what i mean um but i'll see when it comes out i'll report well, back that, on this that's podcast. It. it's all speculation isn't it um yeah cool so you've been down on skyrim uh, and you'll now do a fist fight in khajiit um so yeah i'm basically like just kind of games. Yeah, kind of. I'm just going through a couple of things before the before the uh, the big games come out. Um, just stuff that I can play without, like you know, nothing too, nothing too. I don't know, not demanding, but nothing too kind of 
you know, I've, I've played both games before, so I can kind of just uh, relax when I'm playing them and not worry about having to follow story or anything. No, so that sounds fair enough. Like a palate cleanser after Assassin's Creed. Yeah, that, that's what I was thinking before, a palate cleanser. So, <clears throat> so cool. that's my next week or two, I think. And then I, I don't know what comes out first. But um, once we hit October, it's, uh, it it's going to be a ride. It's starting, starting soon, the, the, the wave. But uh, before we get into that, Cash, what have you been playing the last week? So uh, I've been playing... More of the same, a uh, bit of uh, Sniper Elite 4. Uh, I tend to not play the campaigns now. I tend to do the online survival. Um, I always seem to find players on there, and it's, it's a lot of fun. It's kind of four people trying not to fuck up and taking down tanks and hundreds, dozens and dozens of Nazis being thrown at you. Um, it also manages to squeeze in the um, kill cams as well, so that's pretty good. You don't kind of lose out on that. That's cool, because that's something multiplayer's always had trouble with, like the stylish kill cams and the slow-mo and... Yeah, it, it it basically just rips out the slow mo. So when you do a kill cam, you just get a really quick kind of um, flash of gore. <laughs> There's times where I've just taken a shot, um, not in the dark, but just thinking, "Oh, is that someone over there in a the bush or behind the window?" <laughs> and then you've just seen this skull on screen getting split in half, and you're like, "Ah, yeah, I guess that was somebody." <laughs> so it's pretty funny. Uh, so I'll be playing that. I'll be playing that uh, at work. And the other game I'll be playing at work, it was released earlier this week on PlayStation Plus, was uh, Batman Arkham Knight. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've, I've played it before. I've completed it before. But this is just kind of um, a bit of fun here and there. Uh, just kind of jump in, beat the shit out of some people, um, do some stealth moves, uh, take down Poison Ivy or Two-Faced or Penguin or whatever you need to do. And it's just a really good looking game. I forgot how good looking it's, that game is and how really well put game. together it was. Yeah, yeah it was... Uh, I, I like it. Um, Rocksteady have been absent for far too long. Um, I feel like I feel like that game was very much kind of overlooked or harshly kind of like I don't it, know. There was a lot. Of, it was, yeah, it was on the ignored. PC because it had really bad uh, release on the PC. It was really bad yeah. port. It was really kind of poorly optimized. Uh, but yeah, everyone was renowned and saying the PlayStation 4 version was like the ultimate version. It was fucking amazing on PS4, and it it still looks really fucking good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's a really good game. Um, I, I feel like the PC controversy overshadowed its console counterparts when it was released. Yeah, they were giving out refunds and shit, man. It was they, crazy. they called it basically and had to rebuild it uh, and re-release it at another time. It was, yeah. it was nuts. Um, yeah. I, it's, I, it's better now, apparently, on the PC. Yes, I think but, it is. I think it's fine. Um, but, I mean, it's years, years down the yeah. line. So, um, uh, done that. Uh, the other game I was released on PlayStation Plus, uh, PlayStation, PlayStation Plus was um, Darksiders 3. Uh, I don't oh, know yeah, if you guys yeah. ever played oh. that, but I've played one and two. Uh, again, I only played those when they were released on the PlayStation Plus. So, is this so, the one that came out... I'm going to say this year. It was the end of last year. Yeah. yeah, I thought the same thing. I was thinking, hang on, this came what? out this year. It was last year, was it? It was the end of last yeah. year, 2018. Oh, I, I, oh, for fuck's sake. Because on, uh, on, the, on the splash screen, when it comes up, it says copyright 2018. So I, I thought it was this year, but it must have been for the back end of last year. Um, oh, this is so the fast. one that's a bit like a, a Dark Souls-y type. Or like a, they're, <laughs> well, they're attempting to make it Dark Souls-y. Type. So... I do want to make that comparison, so I'm glad you did, <laughs> because it just seems <laughs> like any game comes out, oh, this is the Dark Souls of this, or this is the Dark Souls of that, but it does have that feel to it. So I've played the original two, and from what I remember, this doesn't really play like those games. There's even um, an option when you start to say, do you want the classic um, combat, or do you want the new kind of default setting? And I picked Wait. the default, I thought, you know, we'll, we'll just kind of stick with uh, what the developers wanted to do. Um, I keep finding myself just struggling even on the early bits, and I th- keep thinking to myself, this wasn't like this when I was doing Darksiders 1 or Darksiders 2. Well, I think all the, all the Darksiders games have been pretty radically different between each other, so like Darksiders 1 is far... I've never played any of them, um, if I'm honest, but I understood Darksiders 1 was a kind of like a Zelda-like, like an action... It was, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was think, very much Zelda. I was going to say, uh, Darksiders 1 or 2 kind of, I could compare the two. I don't know if you would agree with well, me, well, mate, I, but I, I would say I definitely this. Darksiders 2 was more like a Diablo style, like uh, monster masher with it, loot. It, it did. It got a bit more action-y and looty and stuff. I mean, yeah. I, I didn't actually I didn't actually play through Darksiders 2 but from what I've seen of it. Um, but this one, I, I, I actually kind of uh, have been keeping an eye on this one because I might get it at some point. 
Well, well it's free. It's free if you know the PlayStation Plus, man. Yeah. got no excuses. Um, so I've been uh, playing it, and um, it looks really nice. Um, you, you can tell that they're not a big budget company, so there's not kind of hmm. got the full clean polish and absolutely everything, but it still looks great. Uh, the combat you know is what it quite... is? It, it reminds me of like back in the, the the PlayStation 2 era where you had like um, games that weren't like big budget, uh, you know, main mainline games. Like AAA kind of, games, yeah. Yeah, that can be kind of fun. They won't be perfect, but they can be still fun. Um, well, that was yeah, yeah, that was yeah, obviously yeah. my um, thoughts on the original two. There weren't anything completely and utterly groundbreaking or yeah. awesome but i i enjoyed them i, I really like play the first one and when the second one came out um i think it was a couple of years ago on the playstation plus it's the same thing i, I really enjoyed that it took me a little bit of time to get into but when i finished the, it i was quite happy quite pleased definitive um, edition yeah I'd definitely probably, yeah. i probably own all of the dark siders it's via some means and i've never played any of them <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, yeah, it's, so I'll be playing it. Um, I like it so far. I'll probably need to put some more time into it. Um, yeah, it seems really straight. It seems like it came out really recently, like you guys were saying this year, but it, it's probably the most recent PlayStation Plus game that I, I oh, know. Oh, you know what it was? Uh, this year, Darksiders 1 Remastered came out on a Switch, I think. Um, did it? Yes, it did. Yeah. It did, I think. I'm sure I've seen it. No, I'm pretty sure um, it did. Fun fact, the... the t- Darksiders 1 Remastered was released on the Wii U, and apparently <laughs> it's like a shit version of it. And I have this part of me that's like, I should get that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. I just, you know. Because but... you love weird shit games? Yeah. It's a challenge, man. It's a challenge. It's supposed to be shit. I'm like, all right. <laughs> Let's see how it is. Uh, so, yeah, I'll probably uh, check in with you again next week, see how my progress on Darksiders 3 is. Uh, and then the last game is... Um, Something I bought over the weekend, kind of mini impulse buy. Something I wanted to pick up for a while. Like it was the uh, Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection. Oh, oh right, yeah. Uh, I found it online for about twelve pound. I thought I'll uh, give it a go. That's and the good. Way it kind it's of like mar- thirty pound or something normally for for what it is. That seems far too much. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is kind of the ranting side of me now. So my interpretation of the game that we we're going to get, or the kind of collection we we're going to get, was going to be. Everything uh, Street Fighter except Street Fighter 4. So you're going to get one, two, three. You're going to get all the editions in between, and then you're going to get certain editions to play online. Um, and I thought, great, that's good because I really like some of the original stuff. I even like some of the uh, home console releases on some of the games. Uh, and I thought this would be good. And I like the um, they re released the Street Fighter 3 on the PS3 and Xbox 360 in the last generation. And I thought it was going to be that version that we were going to get. Uh, with kind of you know added little uh, achievements and stat tracking and uh, things like that, um, got none of it. Got absolutely fucking none of it, and I was really annoyed. I'm glad I've kind of paid ten, twelve pound for it. It's just going to end up being a game that uh, I might pull out when friends come over. We can have a quick bash in it. But I, I was really disappointed with what I've got. Um, even the Street Fighter Two, uh, I know the ultimate or the Ultra Edition on the Switch has kind of the new sprites and new HD um, textures. Um, there's none of that on this on here, and I don't see a reason why. I, there's none of to the. Be fair, uh, to be fair, as well, what makes me laugh about that ultra edition on the Switch is that yeah. uh, it wasn't it six like fifty pound at launch or whatever. Yeah. And then a year later, he is like <laughs> a collection with like that and like a million other games. Yeah, it's I, it's it's really bizarre why they would. It just seems like a half done collection. It has none of the uh, puzzle fighting games. So there's like Super Puzzle Fighter and Puzzle Gem Fighters. None of those games are on there. Um, I was really disappointed. Uh, I remember the Street Fighter Alpha 3 home release had like a world tour mode, had like a tournament mode. It had kind of um, additional character on there as well. Even Street Fighter 3, you could play as Gil, which is the boss. You can't do that on this version. Um, the only kind of uh, recompense we have is like there's a sprite viewer and there's like a, a history of Street Fighter kind of chrono chronologically talked about some of the games that you'll never get to play on this collection. It just seems really, really... That's really weird that they're mentioning <laughs> the things that they've it's purposely not selected to be it's, on the collection. I'm just absolutely dumbfounded why you do that. It, it's almost like it could have been the perfect collection, but they thought, nah, we don't want to do that. We'll just scoop it. If they called it the Street Fighter Arcade Anniversary, I'd completely understand. I'd say, yeah, fair enough. These are all kind of games released on the arcade. And that's exactly what it's trying to be. It's trying to be just kind of the... Uh, 
re reliving the the arcade days. It's even got kind of the um, borderlines between the uh, TV screens. So everyone plays a wide screen now, but those games are kind of you know for the standard definition of TVs. Yeah. So the uh, ratio is way off. So you can choose to increase it, which looks really odd, or you can have it normal, and then you have kind of like the arcade um, cabinet uh, borders. So it does look like it's supposed to be an arcade release, but it doesn't say anything like that on the game, and it really fucking annoys me because it's not what I thought it was going to be. So um, yeah, a little bit disappointed. I'm I'm probably not going to trade it in. Uh, I'll probably keep it just because, as I say, it's got some of the games on there that'd be good for when friends come think, round. Yeah, and for, you the, kind of... for the price you paid, I think it's it's a pretty cool thing to have. Yeah, I think it is, but I'm so glad I didn't pay thirty quid when it came out for it. I was. Really tempted to at one point. I was tempted, oh, I might get this because I'm a really big Street Fighter fan. I think I've played almost all the versions and almost every console I've ever had. Um, like, even Street Fighter Five was like your beat 'em up of choice when it came out, or like when it was the competitive one. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. One of, one of the few people who like really stuck, stuck with it. With it. <laughs> <laughs> I, even Street Fighter Four, I've played uh, every single edition um, from PS3 and the PS4. I even went to kind of some tournaments as well. I never won anything, oh, wow. but I really enjoyed kind of getting to that level and taking it really seriously and stuff. Um, a so, custom fight stick. Uh, no, I prefer controller, and it's it's really odd for <laughs> well, kind of hear that in the fighting game community because everyone just kind of. Um, I heard the best by, players uh, these days are, are, are pad players rather than stick players. Yeah, I prefer pad. I've always have done, and I think I probably always will. Um, I don't think I've got the uh, patience to relearn the methodology using a fire stick but if people prefer it and they want to play that way then more power to them Options. so yeah so yeah anniversary collection really disappointed um glad i only paid a fraction of what it was at release um just kind of all i can say is do your homework before you buy a, a game like this i'm glad i didn't make this mistake what like six months ago whenever it first came out did you get um, on the playstation 4 didn't you yeah yeah, I was the PS4. Yeah, I was going to say because I came out on the Switch, but obviously with the Switch not having like a a proper D pad, um, I imagine it would be quite a weird game to play. I'm sure, the pro, uh, the uh, Pro Controller has a D pad, or does it not? Oh, it does, but it's, it's not great. <laughs> As we found out, honey. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's it. That wraps me up. What I've been playing this week. Cool. Um. So, my turn. Uh, I um, uh, tipping away just uh, not as much. Um, I got my my samurai job into Shadowbringers finally, so I've just been playing through that a little bit. Um, oh yeah, yeah. It's a lot of fun. Uh, still, um, not played it as much. We did. Um, so, like, I don't know if you know, guys, but Monster and Iceborne's out tomorrow. Uh, I might have mentioned it a few times. <laughs> uh, so we. Uh, me, me and my wife basically kind of said, look, Iceborne is basically going to be the the big thing from like next Friday on. We really need to get down some of the like the high level content in Final Fantasy XIV that we've not seen. So we, we joined up, we, we signed up for our um, our guild, our, the called free companies in Final Fantasy, our guild Friday like boss run, and just cleared out all the kind of bosses that we hadn't done. Um, and it was it was really good because we tried to do them with randoms the week before, and it was a fucking nightmare. Uh, I mean, saying people just didn't really listen or understand what needed to be done. Yeah, they were fucking up all over the place. But yeah, we so I'm put it this way: we spent like three hours plugging away at one boss the week before with <laughs> randoms, and never never got a clear, never gigged down the boss, never did shit, and it was a waste of time. Went in with our guild, um, beat one boss four times in a row. And then switched oh, right. to the other boss and did that five times in a row. Just farming him at that point. Over two hours. <laughs> so it was just like, yep, we've got this down. We've seen it enough. We've got it. Like, you know, we, we've seen it. We appreciate it. We've got the stuff we needed from it. Um, you know, we can move on a monster uh, safely. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Final Fantasy XIV, you know, it, it's still there in the background, but it'll probably be taking a back seat for the next few weeks at the very least, maybe the next couple of months. Um, and continuing to chip away at Fire Emblem, I passed the halfway mark. Um, I'm into the second half, which shifts up the story in a fairly dramatic fashion. It's quite interesting. Um, I've now got about 35 hours on that game, and I'm probably 60, 70% of the way through it in the first playthrough. 
you can have up oh, to God. four playthroughs in this game. Oh God, no. <laughs> um, I I feel like the way I'm feeling about now is I will play it through on my current file. Uh, I'm playing as the Blue Lion House in the game, which is yeah, they're, they're all right. Um, they're, they're fairly steady dudes. They seem like the most kind of balanced and normal house, like with a nice mix of characters. They weren't too quirky or too Japanesey. Um, you know, they weren't too <laughs> anim- they weren't too anime for me. <laughs> they were quite nice and balanced. Um, that, that's maybe not 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 carried through the whole story, mind. Um, but I'll probably play through the Blue Lions, uh, and then I really, really want to try the Black Eagles because their storyline sounds really fucking interesting. But I think I will play that as a much slower pace, kind of casually as a side activity longer term. Um, so Fire Emblem is still really good. It's just a, it's a big commitment. Um, with it being on the Switch, it's it's good because I can kind of just play it on the commute. I've said that before. Uh, I'm chipping away at it here and there, and it's 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 good. It, it's very very good. There's something weirdly compelling about it for such a for such a game that, that that could be potentially for such a potentially dry game. It's basically your menus and stats and things like that. It's got just enough personality and flavor to make it really kind of interesting and compelling and dragging you on to the next next stage and next part. So it's good. Um, and beyond that, I'm kind of I've continued to chip away at uh, Remnant from the Ashes. Oh, how is? Uh, I, obviously, I, I wasn't on the podcast last week. Um, how is that game? Because that looks interesting. Um, I have a mixed opinion of it. If I'm honest, oh, no. um, it's it's you know it's, to tell you last week, Cash PC, it's thirty two pounds, about forty dollars in the US. Um, so it's definitely it paints itself as very much like a B tier game from the off, and yeah. It's when it's good, it's very good. So like the the combat is fantastic. The way enemies react to shots is is really really satisfying. It's kind of um, you know you shoot them and they recoil and they, they stagger and in a real realistic way, and it, it just feels good to fight in that game. Um, it again, you know, you mentioned the comparison of Dark Souls before. Cash, it is Dark Souls with guns in its structure. You move from checkpoint to checkpoint to these big red crystals that you rest rest at. They're pretty much bonfires. Um, but if you if you play by yourself, it's it's a brutally punishing game. Like the game is challenging; it throws <coughs> overwhelming enemies at you. Um, and when you're by yourself, when you die, that's it. You're back to the last checkpoint, and all the enemies respawn. All the dark souls, and you start again, and hope you get through this time. When you're with, um, you can play cooperatively. In fact, the game is designed for it. It can be you and two others, or so party of three, and. Um, it's much better because you can revive each other, you can cover each other, you can really... You, it, it, this this game will shine with friends because you need to strategize, you need to coordinate, it, it takes effort. Um, that, that's, that seems like a, an area where it, it differentiates itself from Dark Souls or... or you know, oh, Souls com- completely. When so, so when you're playing by yourself, it feels more akin to like a survival horror game. Um, yeah. Whereas with friends, it's more akin to like Left, Left for Dead. Uh, okay yeah yeah so you just get um, much more enemies it's all about kind of keeping each other alive and yeah it's like that panicked frantic action that left for dead just does so well this does just as well again and it's got that right enemies are randomly placed upon every death so you will never know specifically what oh, okay. is around the next corner i mean you'll go in different tile sets and different areas which you know have specific enemy types but you might find like one of their heavy units around a corner in one run, and then there's like six of their light units in the, the next run. Um, so it's you know there's an element of randomization around it, um, but I just as much as I'm enjoying it, and the highs are very very high, the lows uh, you know it's a frustrating game. So I did a, I did a I did a video spotlight on this uh, over the weekend, um, and in that we I managed to come across a boss called oh not Gorefist. Um, Jesus Christ, I can't remember what it's called. But it's basically this big behemoth with massive fucking claws and it just walks at you and tries to like slash you to bits. And the boss itself, piss fucking easy to fight. <laughs> it, it big... I thought you going to say you were struggling and you've taken oh, all your weekend. And... Well, no, here's the thing. So the boss itself, big, lumbering, not particularly dangerous in that it, it takes ages to get to you um the game takes great pleasure in giving you a lot of iframes and a dodge roll so you can dodge through attacks and it it, it makes you do that in order to survive so this boss is once you've got the measure of when to dodge roll you use your iframes to get behind them and run away get, get some distance between you blast him before he catches back up with you the difficulty in the boss design is not in the bosses themselves it's the fact that the game just is like 
You find this too easy, yeah? Well, fuck you. He's a hundred ads. And it just floods the arena with monsters to, to just swarm you. And it gets to a point where... It just where seems like an ad is such a difficulty. Lazy. They just throw stuff at you rather than making it more challenging. Yes. So, I mean, Sekiro came out this year and that's got some of the best fucking boss fights I've, I've played through ever. It's probably got the my, my favorite boss fight ever on it. Um, and it was just me and the boss in this contest of skill. And it was fucking amazing. It took me three hours to beat. But it, when I did, it was amazing. And it wasn't. It didn't feel like a chore when you were fighting them and losing. It just felt like you were you were learning and getting better every time. Yeah. And it was it was fucking unreal how good it felt. This just feels like well, shit. Um, a million little monsters came and slashed the fuck out of me and just bottlenecked me into a corner and just fucked me and I couldn't do shit. And uh, what's the point? So the um, in the spotlight video, I, I just couldn't beat this boss. I even had two friends, randoms with me in the video. And it was basically like, yeah, we've tried like 10 times now. I'm just going to end this video. Um, and then as soon as I ended the video and wrapped up, I was like, I'm not going to I'm not going to leave these two guys. They've stuck with me for like 20 minutes now. Oh, my God. One, one more go. And we did it mainly because <laughs> I was just like, fuck these monsters. I'm just going to stick on the boss. You get like I just thought like you guys you can flat you can flat with the monsters. I'm just gonna tank the hits when they hit me, and hopefully you'll keep them off me. And I'm yeah. just gonna focus fire the boss down. Yeah, it took all of thirty seconds to kill the boss. Um, oh god! I was like, oh well, that was that was fucking easy. But I, I've got so there's like I, the game's kind of semi randomized. Um, there's different kind of tile sets that can get loaded in. You can re-roll your campaign to to change up those tile sets. Um, but I get the impression there's like four worlds you go to. And um, I'm on the third world now, and I think I might be hitting my limit with it. Um, the enemies yeah. there are just brutal. They're like these weird fungus tree people, and um, oh shit, I they love are, Dark Souls. They are fucking yeah. relentless, man. And you can like, if you shoot them in the legs, you can blow the legs off, and they crawl at you. And that's My even God. they're even more dangerous that way because they're not much slower. They're, they're still fucking fast. <laughs> but if they grab you now, they can do an insta kill move on you. And that just comes across as bullshit to me. When you're fine, when you're in a group, because all you do is pick each other up. Um, but when you're by yourself, it's like, oh, well, I just had a bad spawn because 16 of them all popped out at once. And I couldn't, I literally can't dole out enough damage to kill them before they kill me with their insta kill ability. Um, it, it, yeah, uh, I've got a lot of like, a lot to say about what I don't like about that game, but. What I do like is probably harder to kind of verbalize because it's more of a feeling. It's how the game feels, and when it's when it's firing on full cylinders, you've got a you've got a party of equally matched people who are all geared to a similar level. Um, you're just making steady progress. It's challenging but not unfair. It feels fantastic, um, but when you're playing by yourself and then randos are dropping in and they're either we're better than you and murdering everything, or we're worse than you and just being a hindrance. It, it loses its shine very, very quickly. I mean, I, I, so I, I, I logged on kind of late last night and I thought, you know what, I'm not going to make any progress on my own game. I'm just going to join randoms and help them yeah. out and level up. So, Sometimes I find that quite fun, actually. You, just, you can learn tactics, you can try uh, new setups and stuff like that without much of a... Uh, well, a maybe... Maybe I was just in the wrong mind frame, but I had a shit time. <laughs> Jumped into a game with a guy who was... Um, insistent on attacking an optional boss and he was blatantly not geared or leveled enough to be able to take this boss on comfortably without being very good and he would last approximately six seconds into the fight before going down and expecting you just to fucking help him up and yeah and the game scales the amount of ads up with the volume of players so we were getting two players worth of ads spawn in with just me to contend with them and i stuck with them for 15 minutes and after a while i was just like i think how it ended actually is we charged another right this is my last goal fuck this if this doesn't work out we're not going to do it it's just not physically possible with mine and his skill yeah. levels here um he died about like, 10 seconds into the fight and I literally paused and quit as the boss was walking towards me because I thought, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to die in about a minute here anyway. Yeah. I'm still, I'm not going to delay the inevitable, we'll just go for it. Yep. The, only way to, the only way to win that one was not play at all. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's it's yeah, it, it, it's basically the type of game that if me if, if us three were playing it, I think we'd all really enjoy it. 
uh, I think if we, or we, because I'm playing it separately from anybody who I, I know or I'm, I'm talking to on a regular basis, it's 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 peaks and troughs. Um, it, it's it's hard to recommend unless there's a few of you picking it up, um, which is a shame because when it shines, it is one of the more fun games I've played uh, this year. Um, it, it it's a game that gradually opens up. It starts off quite drab and, and typically post-apocalyptic. Um, but it starts getting quite exotic with its alien world, its creature design, and all the rest of it. Um, it's it's interesting. Um, it's got a deal, a great deal of like exploration as well. It, it pays to explore the levels and poke around and look for secrets. Uh, there's hidden items, hidden weapons. Um, it's it's interesting. I, I, it's one of these games like it's thirty two pound. If that's not too big of a deal and you think you're going to be interested in it, I think I'd recommend it in that regard. If you think I would like that, but not for that much money, then pick it up on sale. I'm sure it will be on sale eventually. Uh, yeah, um, I'd imagine that's the type of game that will plummet in terms of uh, cost. Um, um, it, it, it it really depends because it's it seems to be picking up a lot of traction word of mouth. I mean, I did not know this game existed about two days before it, it launched. Yeah, um, I, I remember I was saying last week I went to a game shop um, and I just saw it. I was like, oh, wow, what's this? Yeah, it's it's... As bizarre, you know, it's it, it it's a strange one, but it seems to be getting more and more traction. The developer seems well on board for supporting it long term. They've already promised some new features. Um, I don't imagine I'll probably play it over the next week, so I'll probably not talk about it too much next week. Um, I think there'll only be one thing I'm talking about next week, if I'm honest. Uh, and it will be this. Um, but yeah, that I've been remnant from the ashes and I, I every time i say it i pause because i keep calling it revenant in conversation because it's such a fucking generic title that doesn't really mean anything in the context of the game even that it you know it's, it's a bad title it should be called something better um i i don't know what Phoenix that would be yeah. um it, it just feels like the most kind of like corporate fucking like Let's throw darts at a, like a, a board with, like, with words on until we come up with like a title. Um, it just feels like it was a title by committee. Um, it, it's not good, but you know, it's 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 a diamond in the rough, I'd say, which hopefully will be polished going forward. Um, but that 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 reduced price point, brand new at thirty two pound, definitely definitely helps take the sting out of it. Um, it's not. It's not a bad game. It's just I've got some problems with it. I think there's a very certain, a very specific set of circumstances which make it shine, um, and they're not always the easiest to to wrangle as a, you know, a man with a full time job and other responsibilities and friends who've got the same deal. <laughs> I mean, like we 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 were talking on the, the the podcast last week, Cash, and you were basically like, "Well, it's kind of this or Monster Hunter." Yeah, because. Like even if the even if money's not the issue in purchasing it, it's the time ah, investment. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Um, there was a time where I could get both and not bat an eyelid, but it's long gone, I'm afraid. Well, it's the old. Like, yeah. It's like a, it's it's like a meme in the gaming community, isn't it? As as, as the, the gaming community be, becomes older and older, it's like it's become more and more relevant in that. Um, you know, you've got all the time and none of the money when you're younger, and then all the money and none of the time when you're older. Exactly. Like, uh, I mean, for, like you know, again, just 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 to bring Monster Hunter back into it. Um, earlier today, someone posted that they're bringing out a new um, like statue for the signature model, for, uh, sig- signature monster for Monster in the World, Nogaganti, and he's a fucking cool looking monster. And these these statues they make are like a hundred quid, and you've got to import them from Japan. Mm. And I was looking at it going, <laughs> I really want that. Isn't too bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, for you a fucking... shipping cost as well. Oh, for you. Well, I'm gonna look into it. I'm gonna look into it. It, it, it looks really fucking cool. Um, it, it, yeah, it's at the point where I'm just like, I'm just buying stupid shit. I'm in a second childhood. Um, but yeah, that definitely time. I mean, like, say I've been playing Fire Emblem for like three or four weeks at this point, and I've probably got another two weeks at least in it. Probably more because I say Monster is going to be diluting my time even more. Um, and it's crazy. Yeah, so like. Uh, Getting hold of games isn't a problem, but playing them is is a bit of a nightmare. Yeah, which kind of comes back to my my, my kind of issue with them saying Doom's going to be twenty two hours long. Not only do I not want to be at that like high octane point for twenty two hours, when the fuck do I have twenty two hours to do that? 
Yeah, I think in general, I think that's why I'm kind of like the way I'm looking at it is I kind of want to limit how many open world games I play. Um, yeah, because I just can't be bothered. <laughs> I just I'm definitely I want short linear experiences, and then I can move on to the next game. You know, <laughs> what's funny? Actually, I was looking at that uh, Man of Medan, which is um, a follow up. It's the studio, and you got the name. Is it Super Giant? Super Giant Games, yeah. Yeah. Um, who made uh, Until Dawn? Uh, yes. Oh, no, um, oh, no. Is it is that them? Super Giant. Sure. Oh god, I have no idea. But yeah, I the know. Until Dawn people. Uh, so they're 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 basically basically making a dark pictures anthology series, so shorter games, shorter experiences at reduced prices. Maybe bringing one, two a year out. And Man of Medan is like uh, the first in that series, and it's like a ghost ship story. Super uh, massive it, games, that's it. Super massive oh, games. Yeah. yeah, Super Giant is um, Greg Cavasan's company, isn't it? It's, yeah, that's that one. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I was looking at that because it's like an eight-hour experience, and it's kind of like it's. Uh, it just looks like you know, it's a, it's a slightly extended horror film, interactive horror film. I was like, you know, that that's that that the type of shit. Yeah, I'm it's, on board with. exactly. Just more <laughs> until dawn, basically. Yeah, um, which again I've got and haven't played, and it feels like it would be right up my street. Hey, it's a lot of fun that game. I remember playing it. It was uh, I, I was pretty surprised. I played. You played the um, VR game. A little bit. I suppose it might be lost in you some of the themes and stuff because you, you essentially go through like the locations in the game and you meet the characters of the game and things. And uh... well, I got I got the impression it was like the backstory for the serial killer in in the main game. I could be wrong. Yeah, I, I would say it is, and the game has absolutely nothing to do with the main game at the same time, which is a really weird thing to say. <laughs> Um, I played a little bit of that. It felt like um, a, a good like VR demo game, and like things jumping out here. And, oh yeah, I, uh, the, I the when everybody controls. comes around, um, it's usually that or almost something else that I get them to uh, have a bash at. Because it starts off really simple, just like a carnival ride and shoot, and then it gets really kind of yeah. twisted very, and very, macabre, very and uh, yeah, yeah, pretty good. But um, yeah, so you know, I've, I've got those three games on the go. Um, once I spawns out uh, tomorrow. Which I, I don't know if you know, guys. I'm very excited for. Uh, oh, really? You haven't mentioned it once. Uh, the the reviews have come out for it, and it sounds like it's pretty much just a sequel rather than an expansion pack. It's it like it, it's not. It, there's shit tons in that game. It, there's there's more yeah, I, in that game than that was announced before. I was oh yeah. I mean, I was looking at the uh, in my head. I was like, this is DLC. You bought the PlayStation Store. So look at the PlayStation Store prices. It's like 35, 40 quid. I thought, oh, is that true? And then I looked online and it's about the same like a disc game they buy from online or something. So I was like, oh gosh, okay. So it's, Yeah, it's it's probably there's probably as many monsters in this than there was in the base game. Um, granted, a lot of them are returning fan favorites. So it probably means something more to me as somebody who's played like the last kind of two or three entries in the series than somebody who came into world, like kind of cold. Um but there's some good ones, man. They've, they've picked some really, really fucking good ones. And they already announced um, the first DLC monster in October. And it's a creature who I must admit, as much as it's really cool that they're bringing this one in, um, I did kind of groan because there's such a cunt to fight. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a creature called Rajang. And he Big is a gorilla fucking guy. Yeah, he's a bull crossed with a gorilla who can literally go super sane. Uh, he glows. He like he's like a you know a brown gorilla looking thing with giant horns, and then he literally kind of bursts into a fit of rage and goes blonde and spiky head and, and courses with electricity. And he he's a goddamn nightmare. He's um so like in the end game of Monster Hunter, you fight like the elder dragons. He's not an elder dragon, but he can fight elder dragons and beat them. Um, he's just unreal. Uh, the last time I think I fought him was probably in Monster Hunter 4, and he was the hardest fight in the game that I ever got to. It's just un unreal. Um, so he'll be good. You know? So you know when they brought um, Devil Joe into Monster Hunter yeah, World? Yeah, it's almost like that. He's like the high, like he's like the, the, the master rank version of that. Um, and I cannot wait to see Devil Joe and him have a turf war. I think that'll be spectacular. <laughs> it's like the fight, there's like um, fan art of those two fighting and has been for years and it wasn't until World that the monsters could actually like physically interact with each other beyond like just nudging each other yeah. with their attacks and uh, if they do not have a turf or Capcom have dropped the ball 
and they've not dropped the ball any any time in the build up to it so you know it's it, it's going to be good i'm i'm very excited um so yeah i think that seems to cover everything that we've been playing this week um plenty of variety and uh probably will continue it sounds like we're all starting new things more or less so yeah we'll some new stuff to talk about next week um so let's move on to this week's news um i've got to admit that there's probably not a huge amount of news this week, but one of the news stories kind of incorporates a lot of things and it kind of just came out yesterday. But um, uh, the the first one that I got, and a lot, a lot of this is kind of new announcements and things like that, but um, the one of the ones that I don't know how much interest it is to you guys, but I, I thought it was quite nice, is that Shovel Knight is getting um, both new features and new DLC released for it. Uh, how many, I mean, how many years has Shovel Knight been out now? It feels like it's been a long, long time. Um, but well, there's, there's a Wii U version of that game, so that's how long it's been. <laughs> well, I had it on the Vita. Um, yeah, I remember it being advertised on the Vita, so that's, God, that's about seven, eight years there. I mean, it's it's been out a long time. Um, 2014, apparently. Gosh, five years in. So Shovel Knight's five years. Shovel Knight seems to have become like this kind of iconic character. I mean, he's got a, an amiibo. He's in all these like other indie games. He seems to become like yeah, this indie darling, like a like a meme almost. I think there's um, there's I think there's a lot of pop culture around Shovel Knight, and uh, there's a lot of I've seen kind of uh, fan art and cosplayers uh, Shovel Knight and stuff. Um, I mean, it's never struck me as kind of uh, a personable character or a charismatic character, but hey, there you go. I think he's got like an he's earnest. Got, he's got a cool design. He's got a cool he design. Does. Well, I think it's it's weird because it's like it's a fairly Billy Basic kind of knight with horns on his helmet, but at the same time, there's something really charming about him. I, I don't know. I, I I really like him. I just don't know why. I can't really put my hand on it, uh, put my finger on it. It's 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 odd, but I think he's, he is quite endearing. I think the whole point of him is that he is like just this kind of dude with a shovel. He's like. He hasn't got any special powers. He's just like he he just does it because he's brave and goes out and does the right thing. Um, there's something quite earnest to him and very old school, which is exactly what they're going for with that kind of um, yeah. you know, Nezzy yeah. uh, vibe. But uh, yeah, so it's final expansion packs coming out. King of Cards, uh, which is where you play as um, one of the villains, I believe. I think so. All the expansion packs you've played as some of the other knight villains in the game. Um, I think you play as King Knight. And it seems to be more platforming. Uh, King Knight has special abilities that you know change up the pacing of the platforming. But there's also a um, like a, a card game boss mechanic baked into it by the looks of it. Um, so, so all the games have got kind of weird mechanics. Or like um, the, the, I can't remember the, the names of them exactly, but the the first expansion pack you played as Plague Knight, which is all about using bombs to super jump through levels and things like that. Um, the Gosh. second one was where you played as the oh god it wasn't the death knight but he was like a grim reaper type character and he was all about like wall running and speed running and yeah. he was really fucking good um and this guy seems to be like um about like dash jumping and then playing cards to beat bosses in like a triple triad style mini games um it looks weird but it's you know it's more it's it's more shovel knight um, and I will have access to it because it, it, it comes as part of the Shovel Knight treasure trove, which is basically you buy it and you get access to all Shovel Knight that will ever be released as part of this it's, thing. It's weird that there's more content being released for it rather than like a sequel, you know? Yeah, they just seem to... Uh, I don't think we'll necessarily see a sequel. I think we'll see some other things, which is actually part of the second part of this news story. But in addition to the King of Cards, um, there's a showdown mode, which is is coming to the game, and it's effectively like a platform brawler in Shovel Knight, where you get to play as all the different characters and, and fight, like a la Smash Brothers. Um, looks kind of like a fun little throwaway feature. It's not something that I ever realized was coming to Shovel Knight. I, I knew some of the, the, the kind of boss... Uh, playable boss characters were getting their own campaigns and things, but didn't realize we were getting Smash Brothers. Um, it's kind of come full circle, so we've now got Smash Brothers in Shovel Knight, and Shovel Knight is in Smash Brothers as a, an assist trophy. Brilliant. It's the, the meta world we live in. It's good, though. Uh, if you imagine it as uh, young ones like us seeing Sonic and Mario together, or even like uh, James Pond and some other kind of... <laughs> Mega Drive oh, characters God, together. Oh, Jesus. Alex the Kid and James Bond or something. Yeah, it's, it would, it, 
come on, as a kid, it would be like a, a dream, would it? Like a dream matchup. You kind of probably want to get something out of school. I imagine it with your mates, but it's it's good that you can kind of see it as a reality, especially with. I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't think James Pond featured in any of my dreams. <laughs> hey, James Pond, do, hey, do not besmirch James Pond. Here's a question, right? Here's, here's a question. Did anyone ever play James Pond? Because I don't think I ever saw anybody play that game. Uh, I remember James hey, Pond I 2. Robocod. Robocod. And yeah. then James Pond 3, which is the one set on Mars, or in space at least. I can't uh, remember because a, a I friend of ours, Ben, had it. Definitely the first remember. one. And the second where you could kind of extend yourself, I played that as well. So the second one is where you were Robo Cod, as you say, you could stretch yourself, and you were in the North Pole trying to rescue Santa. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. The third one, you were some kind of like intergalactic space ranger type fucking person, and it was all like low gravity kind of running <laughs> mechanics, and like like you would the faster you run, you would stick to the floor, so you could run around loops and upside down and stuff, and. God, um, they were, James James Pond. What a fucking weird character. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, somebody you mentioned before, like Shovel Knight's weird that we're not getting a, a sequel to it, but we are yeah. getting a spin-off. Actually, um, there's a mm. game that's been announced with with the kind of latest slew of, of Shovel Knight news. Shovel Knight Dig is coming, um, and it's. Basically, a, a spin-off game getting made by um, a, a different developer. So, Yacht Club aren't developing in this. They're kind of collaborating with um, a, a developer called Nitro. And huh? basically, it's SteamWorld Dig with Shovel Knight in it. <laughs> Hence the name Dig. Um, <laughs> yeah, apparently, apparently, Dig's Dig's like now a genre. It's like a platformer where you carve through the ground and go down. Um, so, yeah, Shovel Knight Dig. Looks pretty good. Um, it, it was, so I played Steamworld Dig a little bit, and I heard Steamworld Dig Two is actually legitimately great. So if this is kind of more of that with like the charm of Shovel Knight, I'm fucking on board for it. I think it'll be great. But um, yeah, so this is this is a separate game. It's not part of Shovel Knight Treasure Trove, so um, it'll it'll be a separate purchase. But I I do not think anybody can complain about having to shell out oh. for more Shovel Knight at this point. That that original game has had so much extra stuff, well beyond what was originally promised. It's um, it's crazy, but uh, yeah, Shovel Knight's definitely he's cool. I I still really want him to come into Smash Brothers as a playable character. I think that would be really fun. Um, well, well, as we get into later on, didn't they announce there's going to be more? Uh, there's there's yes. more characters in development, isn't there? So there is, uh, which is a good segue, Maddie. Well done. Um, hey. <laughs> So Nintendo Direct last night, uh, well, yesterday, uh, the 4th of September. Um, yeah, so this is like a, a bit of a weird Direct in that it wasn't really about a big announcement as such. It just seemed to be a load of kind of like kind of B-tier announcements that made for like a ton of them, though, that made for a really, really yeah, strong it, and a really it interesting was a good show. direct. Yeah, it was a good direct because there was a lot to take away from it. Oh yeah, there was absolutely tons, and it was it was just good. I mean, a lot of this stuff had been rumored or or, or leaked and talked about, but some of it's kind of surprising altogether. Um, so I'm just having a look through here. So we'll work through the announcements. So the first one leading the the charge is um, Overwatch is coming to Switch. Yeah, that yeah which everyone knew about. So I, I was I was glad it opened the opened the direct because it was like, all right, we knew that was coming. Get that out of the way. Yeah, I mean, Overwatch will run on laptops from like three years ago without a problem. So if they can get a run on the Switch, it runs in 60 frames and it's not too of a too much of a blurry mess, then why not? I would argue that it'll be weirdly uncompetitive, even beyond what like other consoles are against PC, just because of the the, the Joy Cons and they're not not Yeah, great. the analog sticks, yeah. Here's the um, thing I was thinking the other day, right? Um because because the Switch does this more than other consoles do. Will the likes of Widowmaker and Hanzo, who are you know very very kind of precise aiming characters, um, will they be worse on the Switch because of the the slightly gimped control scheme, or will they be better because of uh, gyro controls? Hmm. Mm. Wait and see. Mm, I I, I, can't, I don't know gyro controls, man. You know, it's like a different kind of uh, metro of playing. It's really weird. <laughs> It, 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 yeah, it really is. I generally don't like them. The only game I ever used them on was Splatoon because 
that's so imprecise that it doesn't matter and the gyro gives you just enough extra reaction time that the the lack well, that, of precision that, that game was helps. designed around having gyro controls the original yes. one anyway on, on the way you was the 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 other one the splitting two which is the one i played is probably i can't imagine it differs that much yeah um but yeah so overwatch um i know we've all played overwatch quite quite a lot over the years um do you guys ever get the urge to jump back in uh, sometimes when they release uh, a new story cut scene or a new character, um, I think oh, it'd be nice to play. It, but I've, I don't know. I, th- I think I'd do it and I'd some really shit matches. I think why the fuck did I bother with this and just never play it again? It was good when we were all playing together as a team. I, I really like that. When, yeah, when you play with randoms and stuff, and like the team can just depend on who you get. You know. Um... I think Overwatch is the um, of anything. It's the game that I both love and hate the most. <laughs> um, I think Overwatch as a franchise and as an idea and the experiences I had in the first kind of in that first kind of year, I think it's one of my like top five games ever. I think it's absolutely fucking spectacular. But... Yeah, one game of the year um, as well on kind of a few outlets. And rightly so, it was it was a great game. I really enjoyed so it. And like good. I said, I like playing it with you guys and all the different characters are wonderful, they're discernible, they've got their own unique flair and their own little unique taste and things. Yeah, and... the art style and the design of the characters was always a highlight. Yeah. Just even the music and stuff just gives you kind of this big swell of like kind of childish excitement. Um, being like a, a play of the game or a play of the match is always a great feeling. Yeah, it, it's it's fantastic when it's found on, on all cylinders. But um, a bit like you, Cash, nowadays, I log on and think, I fucking hate this game. Um <laughs> I do not want to play it anymore. It's frustrating. I'm not as good as I used to be, and the yeah. game, and, and the player base has moved beyond that anyway. Um, I'm out the loop on the meta. I don't know who these characters are, let alone how to use them. I'm yeah, an old the new, man, new maps as well. I don't know what's going on. You don't know where you're going and stuff. You don't know where the new best places to hide or best places to scope or best places to watch out for. And yeah, you just... I also feel like the game kind of moved in a direction that left me behind anyway, because I used to play like Zaya. Zaya was my girl. She She's amazing. And she's she's just been untouched more or less since the game came out. And the game's moved in a way that like there's a lot of crowd control and stun abilities, and she just has absolutely no way Nothing. to counter those things. Nothing and it just... It. It just feels like she's either not contributing or just or completely outclassed by a lot of other characters, and it it feels bad. It it feels really bad not to be able to play this character who I was good with and who was good because she's just not been given any love. Zarya's mm. never given any love <laughs> as a character, let alone a, a, like a, a mechanic. Yeah. Um, it's it, it it's you know that that's also a, a bugbear I have with Overwatch. My girls like she's left out in the cold. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it's. It, I mean, it's more people playing Overwatch. It's cool. Um, it's. It's Blizzard obviously see value in porting things to the Switch. Diablo seem to do pretty good for them. Overwatch will probably do very good for them. Interesting enough, it's only forty dollars in America. Um, so I, I wonder if it's going to be like thirty here, thirty five. Yeah, maybe, I can't see it being a full price game because it's been out for many years. But hey, yeah, I don't know. full price. I don't think. Uh, I think it might have. I seem I think to remember you, it being a bit like a little bit cheaper than full price. Yeah, maybe you're right. I can't remember now. But um, I mean, to be honest, I think there's a lot of arguments to say why wouldn't you just make this free to play on Switch? Money, <laughs> money here. Yeah. But they're gonna make shit tons of money off skins. Like if I go and play Overwatch on Switch, I'm assuming I'm gonna have to buy all my skins again. Uh, depends. Um, yeah, I, I I think you probably will. Yeah. Um, isn't I, isn't this this version somehow linked with Steam or something? Uh, I doubt it. Be it'll, it'll be Battle.net if anything. Oh, um, Battle.net. Oh, no, I have no yeah. idea. Even even your PS4 and PS3, you could link with Battle.net, but you'd get like a unique skin or a a color swap or something. But that'd be it. Oh, right. Yeah, I don't think there's much carryover there. I mean, look, they they want to sell you this this shit as much as they can. Um, yeah, I, I doubt there's any kind of crossover on the cosmetics. So that, that's their business you know, model, let's face it. The, the, what, what I'll say is strange about this game, and I only thought of this, like, was because this game is online only. Like, with the Switch, like, kind of, a lot of people use it portable only. Um, obviously, on commutes and stuff, it's it's going to be kind of useless. Uh, it, it's it's like, weird. You know, yeah. 
It's, so yeah. it's kind of like you have to kind of play it at home, the same way you would play like um, you know on a, a another console or PC. But then on the Switch, you're getting like a, a shit control scheme if you're using the <laughs> the Joy-Con. The only advantage I see of it is is having people in a room um, with switches. But I mean, yeah, I think if you were that serious about it, you would probably just you know I can you can bring a PC over or a PS4 as well, like. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it's weird. I mean, it, it 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 makes sense for Blizzard to do it. I don't think I'll be picking it up necessarily, mainly because, as I say, I play Overwatch for like ten minutes and realize I fucking hate it. Um, well, the sorry. thing is, it, it's 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 better on the other consoles, and the advantage Switch usually has over, over other consoles is, hey, you can play it wherever you want, but you can't do that with this game. Yeah, maybe I mean, maybe that becomes. You're right. As it stands now, it's weird. Maybe that becomes less of an issue going forward as like five G becomes a thing. Um, maybe it's, yeah, but I just but, think like unless unless you're switch only, you know what I mean. I mean, um, maybe there's, there's going to be a lot of kids who are. Yeah, true. Um, and let's face it, as much as Overwatch is a very competitive kind of hardcore game in a lot of regards, it's also effectively like Saturday morning Avengers. Uh, you know, it, it, and yeah, it, it's a nice gateway to DLC for kids to get, you know, skins and stuff. So, um, yeah, so Overwatch is out on the 15th. Uh, when you buy it, it um, comes with a bundle of 14 character skins and a three month subscription to N- Nintendo Online, um, which is fair enough. That, that I mean, that service is cheap anyway now. Um, but yeah, so that's cool. Uh, another game that's coming out, so we'll, we'll kind of probably not dwell on, on a lot of these too much. Um, so Return of the Obra Dinn is coming out in October, um, which is from Lucas Pope, who created Papers, Please. And it came out on PC, I'm going to say, late last year and was yeah, very, I, I very well regarded. Um, it's not on this... another console, though, is it? No, no. It's, it's, it's announced the Switch and it's going to... PS4? Uh, PS4 as well, and Xbox as well. Oh, oh is um, it not perfect? So, it, I mean, it, it looks like one that's going to be good. Um, it's like this weird kind of invest, like psychic investigation puzzle game, and I think I think it'll be very, very good. From what I've heard, uh, it, it looks looks very, very good. So that, that, that's cool. So that's out um, pretty soon. Um, it says fall. I don't think there's been a specific release date given to it but we're in the fall now you know it is september yeah, we've said a few times this that sounds grim when you say it like that yeah i know <laughs> um, so beyond that uh game freak the pokemon factory uh <laughs> such as it is uh they are making a new franchise their, their new game little town hero previously just known as town is coming out on october 15th i don't know much about it and it's weird that yeah. it, this is kind of just coming out so soon. Like it, it, it seemed it went from like early, early concepts with the placeholder town slapped on it to oh yeah, it's Little Town Hero and it's coming out this year. To it's out in a few months. Um, it's literally yeah, out. It's, in, co- like, it's coming um, out. It's coming out not long before Game Freak's other game, Pokemon. Yeah, which is the weird thing. So, but I we, we've talked about this on the podcast before. Maybe they have scaled up in order to make two games. Like they they've always said they wanted. To, kind of keep that under control and not go too big but maybe they've done it to a degree um and maybe yeah. that explains some of the shortcomings of pokemon sword pokemon. and shield that have that have been kind of you know talked about ad nauseum in the last few months um so town's coming out it'll be interesting to see what that game is let alone if it's any good um it, it'll be interesting i suppose um Smash Brothers news up next in that Banjo Kazooie is now playable as of today on the fifth. Uh, so he's out if you have the battle pass for um, Smash Brothers, or you can buy him separately. Um, I bought Joker, the, the oh, from Persona, from Sona, uh, but I haven't got the battle pass. I just kind of I'm just picking these up as I see them, see see fit. I probably will buy, end up buying all the characters or, or most of them. Um, Why don't I get the battle point. pass? I might as well get the battle pass. Um, and uh, well, here's the thing though, they've also announced the, the so with Banjo Kazooie coming out today, um, they've also announced the next character. So there's a lot of rumors about who this character was going to be. And because Overwatch was heavily rumored to be coming to Switch, everyone thought it was going to be Tracer. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, and I thought that, that that's fucking cool. That if if Tracer gets in, I'm, yeah. I'm fully on board. She's my girl. I'll I'll main her in Smash from now on and be very very poor at that game like an old <laughs> Um 
but it's it's not it's it's I, I don't know how you guys feel about this because i have absolutely no experience of this franchise but it is terry from fatal fury terry Bogart. yeah fury, i know him yeah. i know him from king of fighters but yeah i don't exactly. really know king of fighters i don't really know um, I, I know remember, of him, but I, 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 I remember playing um, the King of Fighters quite heavily on uh, Sega Mega Drive days, so I know Terry fairly well. I haven't played many of the recent uh, games. Uh, so in terms of fighting game community, this is pretty big news because, um, I mean, to be fair, they've branched out with kind of Ryu and Ken from Street Fighter. Um, and now we've got Terry Bogard. I'm, I'm thinking maybe there'll be a Tekken character in the future or even uh, a Virtua Fighter or a Dead or Alive character. It's, the possibility. Oh, a dead or alive character would. Yeah. Oof, uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe Nintendo. Uh, I don't know about about that. I, I don't know. My view is somebody who doesn't play a lot of fighting games and has absolutely no experience of King of Fighters or Fatal Fury is whoop de do a fighting character in a fighting game. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's the, it's not as fun as it is like when you drag a character in from uh, you know like a franchise that has nothing to do with. With fighting or, or yeah. smashing, you know? yeah. See, like someone like uh, Snake, I think was really good addition when he's released yeah. on uh, is it Brawl, um, because it's just yeah. it's completely different kind of uh, collection of games, and he's come onto this, and it's it, it works really well, and he's still kind of there, and he's still kind of uh, really really popular, and I like playing him as well, and still kind of got his move set, he's still kind of got things that make him unique, and what kind of made him notable. Um, so I think stuff like oh. that was really good. Yeah, they missed they missed out on a trick. Um, they should have got James Pond. <laughs> they should have got James Pond. All right. Yeah. To be fair, to be Nintendo fair, when you us. fall off the stage, you just fucking extend, <laughs> just and then you just fucking, yeah, exactly. You just never lose. Yeah, that, that's all I want, James Pond. Of course. <laughs> I, I think part I think part of the reason I'm really not bothered about this is yeah, my, I don't have any links with this Terry Bogard, but mm. also Tracer sounds like such a good idea. Yeah, I think that I I, I heard those rumors as well. Um, so I was quite surprised with Terry, but they have said is it one or two to be announced as well? So we've had three. Uh, so so on the current kind of fighter pass that they've got the battle pass, I think I was calling it. It's the fighter pass. Um, They've got five slots, I think, on it, and we've now Terry's the third. So we've had is Terry, uh, Joker. Is Terry not the fourth. I think Terry's the fourth, isn't he? Oh, sorry, he is. You're right. So yeah. we've had um, so we've had Joker, Hero from Dragon uh, Quest, yeah. Dragon Quest. Dragon uh, we've had Banjo Kazooie out today. Terry's the fourth, and we've still got a fifth. So you know, James yeah. Pond might make it in yet. Fucking cross. Terry. What a name. Every time you say Terry, I just think of Terry yeah. Offminder, the side character. <laughs> so that would be more interesting. God, what a reference for the key. Oh, his ultimate could be <laughs> he sings the theme tune. Yeah, exactly. The best ultimate ever. <laughs> Write the theme tune, sing the theme tune. <laughs> um, yeah, so like obviously with this Terry number four, we've got number fifth, uh, number fifth, number five to come, but Nintendo have already basically said, look, we, we're bringing out another fighter pass. We want to bring in even more people because 70, why, yeah, why 77 people aren't enough. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I'm quite fair, happy. So you feel like this is making them money because people think Badger because of your holiday shit, I want a game. And then well, they think... Who else, who else could it be? Um, Shovel Knight might make it in yet. Maybe. Um... <sighs> So on top of Terry, um, there's also a costume for, for the me uh, in the shape of Sans from um, Undertale, Undertale yeah. which is kind of cute. It kind of rules out that Undertale characters are going to make it into the game. To me, it does at least. Um, but it's yeah. a nice little reference. Sans is a cool character. He's, he's a fun, fun guy. It's a chill dude. Um, <laughs> probably one of the bigger announcements of the, the Nintendo Direct, though, was that SNES titles are finally coming to Switch. Mm. Hey. Oh, yeah. um, they are available as of the 5th of September, but I don't believe that because I checked just before the podcast and they're not on the store, at least not the UK store. Um, but it's it's a pretty good lineup as far as I'm It aware. is. They kind of dropped quite a, a, a few of the big titles straight away. They didn't stretch them out. I think this is like a desperate attempt to just kind of like make up on lost ground because they're taking fucking ages with all this shit. Oh, I mean, yeah, this service has what been live a year, and the NES games have hardly set the world uh, alight. Yeah, I mean, it's it's good that they've got their games, but I, I fucking as part of a subscription service, I just find it weird. Um, I mean, I've got, the, I've got is, the list of games that are on the the service. Um, yeah, 
So there's Super Mario Kart, Kirby's Dream Course, Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island, which is a banger. Um, (laughs) F-Zero, Super Mario World, which uh, is so good because I know when we were playing Mario Maker the other month, uh, Matty, I was kind of just thinking, you know, if all this is fun, I would really like to just to play through Super Mario World. Oh, play Super Mario World, Ben. It's it's the best platform I've ever made. It's yeah. uh, so we've got that. That's uh, I probably will chip through that. Um, we've got Star Fox, Stunt Race FX, Super Metroid, Kirby's Dream Land 3, Pilot Wings. Oh, shit. I, I, I didn't even realize Pilot Wings was on the list. <laughs> Fucking awesome. Um, Super Soccer, Super Tennis, Brawl Brothers. I, I have no idea what that is. Demon Crest. Again, don't know what that is. Joe and Mac 2, Lost in the Tropics. Anyone? Nope. No. I know. Uh, what super, uh, I know. I know. Mac and me. That's probably Mac. Uh, Mick and Mac. Global Gladiators. That's what I was thinking of. Do you remember that? <laughs> that no. is on this list. Um, <laughs> it, it's a weird McDonald's like anti-pollution game. Oh my god! From McDonald's, pot kettle blasted. <laughs> yep. It was a weird. It was a weird. Uh, it was a strange but quite good game, from what I can remember. <laughs> Um, anyway, Super EDF, Earth Defense Force, Super Puyu Puyu 2, Breath of Fire, and Super Ghouls and Ghosts. The problem so, is, right, is like a lot of them games you've mentioned, like how many releases have they had in the last like few years? Oh, yeah, completely. Actually, there's one I left off in, for, on purpose, and that is The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. Now, the reason yeah. I left that off is because... What a weird fucking choice to put on the list when this is the the remake is literally getting released in like three weeks. I think it's just because it's one of those essential kind of like yeah, people want to kind of redo the original and then do the new one. Yeah, I mean, I'm, um, I'm not suggesting that like this this the original version will um, steal sales away from the the remake or anything, but it just feels oddly like cluttered to have them both dumped within the same I month. think they're just desperate to get anything for the, the yeah, online subscription it will be. you know what I mean it will be that it will be that absolutely but um I mean I've not I've not actually paid for the switch subscription so this is free for me I, I got I got the year subscription free with twitch prime which I get off yeah. Amazon prime so I'm I'm fucking loving this I think it's great I think it's cool it's here I just can't get excited about it it's like yeah finally you've got some snares games um and you they um, have a D pad, so well you say that, but they've actually also announced that ah, yes. they're they gonna bring segment. out the um they're gonna bring out a SNES controller like them the, like they did for the NES ones. There's a there's a SNES one as well. Uh, exc- exclusive to online uh, subscribers. Uh yes, of course. <laughs> Which is makes yeah. complete so sense. Somebody might give you the, the D pad that you've always wanted. It might be. Um but yeah, I'm actually more excited about that controller than I am about the games. Well, here's the here's the thing: they they don't. So the the NES ones you can't use on anything other than the oh, NES can you not? Oh, there's for no, fuck's sake! There's no confirmation that you'll be able to use this with anything other than the SNES emulator. Now I'm hoping oh. that's not true. I, I'm hoping like compatibility with like Mario Maker is at least put in. Um, you know, some kind of patch on on games that could do with a good two yeah. D, like two D games that rely on a good D pad. It'd be nice if they could be patched to use this, but but who knows? It's um it's thirty US dollars, so I imagine like at twenty five. Christ, the way the pounds going, it might be thirty pound as well. Um, I feel so, weird buying a controller for games you don't like, kind of own. You don't own, you know what I mean? Yeah, mm. <laughs> I mean, it's it's kind of like a collector's item though, as well, isn't it? It's yeah. Um. But on top of that, uh, we also got uh, a lot of announcements. Some of them are are pretty pretty good. Um, so we got Deadly Premonition and Deadly Essence. Premonition Two, yeah. So Deadly Premonition Two is out next year, but they've actually released the original on Switch now. So I've never played it, but I understand that it's it's like a weird Twin Peaks esque yeah. joke yeah. of a game. Yeah, from what I remember, it is. I want to say this is good because I like how Nintendo breathes lives into. Uh, kind of cult games, kind of games that are not kind of on the huge radar. Like Bayonetta is like, a prime example of this. Yeah. Well, like, uh, the difference with this one is that it's been confirmed that uh, Deadly Premonition Two it's only a timed exclusive. Oh, and, I didn't uh, know that. Well, they it will be right. coming to the consoles. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, so yeah, Deadly Premonition is available on the eShop now. I think it's about twenty five pound when I had a look before. Number two is out next year. Divinity Original Sin Two is now on Switch. 
Um, and it's got cross, I think it's got cross save with the PC version. I could be wrong there. That is a fucking unreal game if that is what you're into. It's it's very tabletop RPG. Yeah. But if you like that, holy shit, that's a good game. Um, <laughs> I always buy them. I've got it on the PS4. I always buy them with the intention of like really getting into them. And I get about halfway through the first chapter or through the first chapter and then completely tail off. They... <sighs> To be honest, maybe the Switch might be a better fit because I can just play a bit like I'm doing with Fire Emblem, just chip away at it constantly in my spare time rather than yeah. have to sit down and play it. But yeah, that I mean, the only downside is it's £45 on the eShop. Jeez. That feels quite a lot for a game that's been out for a few years and can <coughs> pick up for 15 quid on other platforms. That's now. a familiar theme, isn't it, with the Switch, though? Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, You, if you get into that game, you will probably get like hundreds of pounds worth of enjoyment out of it you know 45 pound is not a bad investment in that game it just feels steep for for, for somebody like me who's already got it and doesn't necessarily need to buy it a second time either um but yeah that, that, that's there uh, you've got doom 64 star wars jedi knight 2 jedi outcast that's a pretty interesting one um yeah. i used to love I thought, the multiplayer on I, that thought, game. I thought uh, doom 64 was expected but it's a little cool thing to have yeah um uh, i've got a, so jedi outcast i've got a really fun little story about it so i used to have it on the original xbox when xbox live was still fairly yeah. new and the the multiplayer on that was fairly niche in that there wasn't a lot of people playing it but like you know you, you could get games and they were, they were just fun and the, the combat's really good I, i'll probably i'll probably pick that up to be honest it was it's a, it's a good fucking game it's probably aged horribly right it didn't look good at the time if i can remember rightly so i can only imagine it looks terrible now but it was fun um but I remember playing it, and there was a guy, this this young young. I mean, I would have only been like fourteen, fifteen myself at the time. But there was a there was a kid who was younger than me, on, and we just started talking, mm-hmm. and he had a he had like a northeastern accent, and we kind of just started like talking. I was like, "Oh, you sound like you're 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 from like similar place to me." Yeah, man, I feel the woods. Yeah, and we just started like asking each other questions, and it turned out he went to my school. And it was like oh, two yeah. years below me. And I was like, what are the fucking chances of this? <laughs> like, of all the games, in all the lobbies. In all the games, in all the world, I had to be this. <laughs> and it was just this bizarre fucking experience. But that, that's my that's my Jedi Outcast story. Um, something, <laughs> uh, something else called Tokyo Mirage Sessions. Hashtag that was F-E a Wii U Uncle. game. Yeah, it's, it's um, a Wii U game. Oh, man, you like the anthology of Wii U games, man. Someone's got to be. I was going to say the only guy that bought it, however, clearly has to be. Um, we've got Trials of Mana and uh, Vampire, which came out last Vampire, year. Yeah. That's I supposed think... to be a decent game, that's. Yeah, I think um, it's, one, again, like one of these B-tier kind of games that are, are pretty fun. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Nintendo doing pretty well. Um I think I mentioned before I bought uh, the you know the voucher scheme they're doing for online members where you pay like eighty I think it's eighty five pound and you get two you basically get two vouchers to buy two games at full price so you're saving yourself like fifteen pound. Um, except I had a shit ton of gold coins saved up, so I actually got oh, like yeah. seventy five pounds saving myself even more. So I picked that's when I picked up Fire Emblem with my first voucher, and I've got my second voucher kind of sitting there. And I was sitting there eyeing up Astral Chain the other day and going, I have no fucking time to play this, but got a voucher. <laughs> uh and i i have refrained i i don't know what i'm going to pick up with that i i was really thinking i was going to pick up link to the past remake at the end of the month but now i'm kind of thinking i might just save it for fucking pokemon or something yeah that makes if sense I, Invest. I such a big fucking commitment that it actually might trump like three months worth of switch games just for me to play it yeah um, i'd say make make way for the investment sit on it for a bit yeah, I've got a year to spend it. Um, I can easily see me spending this one on something stupid and then buying another round of vouchers and just pissing yeah, it off the wall if you've as got well. Fire Emblem, you've got Fire Emblem in place still, and you've got um, uh, Monster Hunter and stuff. I, I'd, I'd just say sit on it until you, you know. Oh, yeah, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm regret uh, it if you spend I'll, it. I'll probably text you tomorrow saying I picked it up. Um, but <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, I'm being strong. To be honest, as much as Astral Chain seems to be getting good reviews, the more I watch of it, the more I think I'm not going to enjoy playing that. Um, it seems okay. Uh, I think I just uh, it doesn't. I don't. I'm not in the mood for it right now. I think it's a bad, a bad, a bad investment. 
Um, so Nintendo are doing some good stuff, um, which nicely segues into the next story in that they're doing something really nice with uh, British schools of all places. So they're running um, a, a program in partnership with uh, something called the government funded digital schoolhouse program. So the DSH program. And basically what they're doing is they're running like a Smash Brothers tournament across schools. Um, as like a, wow. a a means of like I don't know really it's kind of they're running them as like esports events so they're inviting kids into things like the the production side of it and the the coaching side of it. Um, oh right, so it's it, going to be kind of the whole thing with yeah, kids rather than just a tournament I, I between schools. So, from what I'm gathering here, um, so yeah, it's, it's basically I mean, about this teaching. This is a great them. way to bridge the funding gap in our schools currently. I have to say that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It, it sounds like a really cool idea. So basically, there's like heats across the the country, and then there's like going to be a big finals, and it's all going to be run like a proper esports event, and the kids are going to get involved. And I think the idea is it's going to teach kids like about the industry, like how it's all put together from that side of things. I think, uh, yeah, I think it sounds like a great idea, and it's and it's good publicity for Nintendo as well. So it's hoping to uh, reach sixty schools and over six thousand pupils with this program. And there's a there's a website you can go to to register your school kids. All our fellow kids out there, go to this website and register your school <laughs> and um, see if you can you can get on there. But uh, I just thought that sounded like a fucking awesome idea. And I don't remember this shit being available when we were kids. No. Oh, they don't they don't know how good they've got it. Absolutely. Fault these days. One other barn. Um, but in April 2020, uh, there's going to be the grand final at the London Games Festival. So it's going to be oh, wow. at a proper event, um, and it's going to have like teams who have qualified. And yeah, it's it'd be awesome it, if it's like you know the winner is um, Charlotte, aged eight, from like fucking Welsh primary school or something. That would be pretty cool. I think. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I, yeah, I just thought that was a nice little, like, nice little feel-good story because it sounds like we talk a lot, a lot about a lot of like bullshit or knocks, uh, things that knock us off in the games yeah. industry and all the rest of it. I thought that was a nice feel-good news story. I think it's good. Um, I think it's good. It's not. I I kind of half read a news story about it and assumed it was just a tournament. Um, I'm glad it's a bit more than that. Like they're getting the kids involved and showing organization and how these things are put together. So it's it's almost like having a, a workshop with. Uh, your local football yeah. team coming around and stuff. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, it's uh, it's good. Awesome. So I'll be honest, guys, that is the end of the news that I had primed for today. As I say, not that much has happened in the last week. Um, it feels like you know it's the calm before the storm. The releases are starting. Uh, Monster Iceborne is out tomorrow, and I've got the week off work. Not specifically <laughs> to play that, but I imagine that a lot of it will be spent week. playing. That's what you said last week. Um, I think literally the only thing we've got planned is we said, and this is just kind of come out of fucking nowhere. We're just like, do you want to go to Alton Towers one day next week? <laughs> oh, wow. Um, and apparently it's only open a few days a week when it's term time. So yep. we're heading down, I think, next Thursday. Um, ah, the fuckers, the fuckers are back at school now, so it's, exactly. Uh... Easy living again. So all the rides are mine. Um, yeah. So that, uh, <laughs> so yeah, that, that's pretty much. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm, you know, it's Thursday night now. Um, I'm, I'm probably just going to just desperately try to get through uh, Friday at work in the office as best I can. Just hold on as much as I can, and then um, clock watching, clock watching, and then escape and hunt monsters in the frozen wastes all weekend. I, I've got the, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I've got the Great North Run on Sunday as well, so I've got to, I've got to do that. So, oh shit! You're doing that, are you? Uh, yeah, I'm all I'm fully trained. I've, I've hit my final fall. I'm uh, ready to go. <laughs> so, guys, uh, I think that's everything that we've got planned for this week. Um, I'm assuming you've got nothing. No surprises. Last minute surprises. To no, uh, no. I was going to say is TGS this weekend or next weekend. That's ooh. probably the only thing on my radar. I think I it's didn't. next weekend. I don't think it's this weekend. I've not heard so much build up for it yet. I've heard people mention it. I mean, Sony actually one bit of news that I probably could have done is Sony have released their lineup for TGS, and it's a lot of stuff we've already seen. Yeah, yeah I I think they pretty much said they're not having any um, appearance. Yes, next week. Sorry, I just had a look. Um, it's they pretty much said that there's going to be um, no 
kind of big grand conference stages or anything. So it's it's yeah, we're probably gonna have to wait till next year now, early next year for Sony to announce the PS5 and Xbox to announce theirs. I think TGS would probably be my last uh, hope to hear any more news about that. Uh, I think uh, yeah, I think it makes sense to worry about that next year. Yeah. It, it's it's weird though. I mean, like you've got you've got some like tentpole games still coming out for PS4. You've got The Last of Us Two, yeah. which is not going to be shown at TGS, um, and you've got Ghost of Sh- uh, Shishima, Tsushima. Tsushima, um, and they've already said yes, it will be at uh, TGS. No, you will not be seeing anything new. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it strikes me. <laughs> it strikes me as that's going to be a launch game now for the PS5. I feel like. They are going to be, yeah, I think you're right. I think they're going to be cross generation games, yeah. But my god, imagine launching with the fucking Last of Us Last 2. Of Part that's, 2. Fuck. Yeah, I know. That's that's the, uh, yeah, that's fucking that's a slick move because even if the, it's a PS4 game, I'm gonna buy it when they remaster it on five anyway. I did it with the last one, yeah. Jesus Christ. I, oh, yeah, holy I, I, I'd rather just wait for the PS5 version anyway, I think. Oh, the version, yes, yeah. you're, you're right, Maddie. That's the sensible approach. But no, I will not do that. I will play it day <laughs> one regardless. No, I'm I'm the same. I'm saying it's the right thing to do. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I still love the first game. A lot of people seem yeah. to have gone like cooled off on it a lot. Um, and it was a generation ago, a full, almost a full generation ago. Well, yes, it it, it was, wasn't oh, it? But it was it was it was a fucking amazing game last. It, it really was. No one's denying it, but there's been so yeah. much since then, and so much hype of the new one, and we've not heard anything since well, for a but while I actually. It, I think I've heard a lot of chat lately where people are kind of looking back on it as if, like, yeah, it wasn't that good, really, was it? And I was like, fuck off, yes. It well, was. fuck you, fuck you. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I genuinely love that game. Um, Joe Lanelli like, for the last Smash Bros. character. Oh, that would be awesome. Beating the <laughs> shit out of Ellie, yeah. That's what you th- fucking hell, like, yeah, I just remember that, like, Ellie went through some shit in that game for a child, like, for a child protagonist. She was literally a child, yeah, like, was it 13 or 14 or something? Yeah, yeah, she must have been 14 or something. She wasn't, like, that old. Um, yeah, she went through some pretty dark shit. That 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 whole like the the winter chapter of that game. Oof. Holy shit! That that that's some like absolutely fantastic video. Yeah, it's re- it was really good, really well done. I think I'll uh, I think I'll replay that game before uh, Last of Us Two comes out. Yes, I, I was just. I haven't, play, I, haven't, I haven't played through it since uh, the PS3 versions. Oh wow! Yeah, you need to get it on PS4. It's PS4. It's, yeah. It's, it's a delight, Manny. It's it's lovely. <laughs> okay, then, guys. Uh, it sounds like uh, you know. With that, um, we're all very much looking forward to these games, which apparently will not. Well, uh, are shaping up not to be coming out for the consoles we currently own. Um, but <laughs> that, that 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 brings us nicely to the end of the show. So, everyone, thanks for listening. Uh, we will be back next week, uh, and uh, TGS will be on our doorstep. I will have plenty of reports back from Monster now. I'll be able to bore you with all the, the intimate details of every monster and every everything that's going on in that game. Um, so until then, next time, we will see you later. Bye.